Hey guys, Key here from Keyland and talking today about our new Duotype Ball Lock Disconnects. These are an awesome new plastic disconnect that honestly the feature set is honestly better than some of the even stainless steel, much more expensive disconnects. You see, up until now, plastic ball lock disconnects have all pretty much looked like this. They're all virtually copies of each other. Cornelius originally designed this type of ball lock disconnect a long time ago and then there was CMB started making them and then since then there's been also a lot of uh, Chinese ones made in China as well. Now let me tell you, not all plastic ball lock disconnects are made equal. We've noticed across, over the years that there's been some disconnects made, made out of much cheaper polymers in the first place to try and save cost. Often they're made out of things like ABS. Now those particular ones, generally they're unbranded and you'll notice they're not as robust. So sometimes you put them on a keg or sometimes this collet part breaks or you bash them up against the keg or you accidentally put a keg on top of one and it cracks. When we hear failures, there's generally those no branded ABS ones that are the issue. So if you ever see a no branded disconnect, you know, put question marks over it and ask if this is really worth saving an extra 50 cents on. Um, the other thing is, there are still some good ball lock disconnects we've made with good materials made out of plastic. Certainly, um, you know, CMB, for instance, they, make theirs, they make, make theirs out of nylon, which is great. We use an engineering plastic in our ball lock disconnects called PBT, uh, which has, uh, you know, great thermal properties. It's got great tolerance and stuff like that. And, you know, they simply work really well. A really poor disc poured disconnect, you can also notice straight away, if you look at the underside, sometimes it's not perfectly smooth and round. Sometimes you see little shrink marks and that really affects the performance and you put it on a keg and because you've got little sink or shrink marks in there, the O-ring doesn't seal perfectly on the inside, meaning you'll lose a bottle of gas. So you may have saved 50 cents on the disconnect, but you'll waste a whole lot of gas and you know, it's a false economy. So it's worth buying good quality plastic, certainly if you're making disconnect. Disconnects. Our plastic ball lock disconnects are made out of polyketone, which is an engineering plastic we're starting to implement across the range of a lot of stuff that we're making because it's such a great plastic. It's autoclavable, so this making these entire disconnects autoclavable. It also means that you can um, uh, you've got very good toughness and robustness and very high tolerances when you put them onto things and extremely good chemical resistance. You can chuck these into caustic. Uh, acid, phosphoric, uh, you know, acetic acid, you know, the whole range of chemicals essentially you're going to see anywhere in the beverage industry, these will be working really well with. One of the major things we wanted to change though was, uh, you know, previously the disconnects would come in a thread or a barb, but we wanted to make sure that with the duotype ones, the line just pushes straight in. So with if you wanted to push a line in like that on these old type, you'd have to get the threaded ones and then buy a duo type fitting like this. And then what you'd have to do is then push the line in. Now the problem with, uh, with that is having an extra fitting makes the whole disconnect quite a bit more bulky. You can see the two there, it adds a lot of height on and sometimes if you've got a tight keg fridge, you know, you may not be able to easily fit it in. Um, the other thing is it just adds another point of potential leak or failure. So when you've got this disconnect, if you haven't done it tight enough, you might find it will leak. Or if you potentially over tightened it, you could you know, crack the plastic for instance, if you've really cranked it, up, cranked it tight up uh, with, a, with a spanner for instance. So that's something we thought we might try to eliminate with these ball lock disconnects. Now these are, when I said they're more compact without the fitting, they're also, uh, even if you're looking at the barbed one, they're even more compact. They're quite a bit lower in height. And one of the nice things about that is when I put my beer and gas line on here, just give us one second, I can attach these to a keg like so. Let me just get this the right way around. So push that on top of the keg and you'll see that these disconnects are hardly adding any height onto the keg at all. So if you've got a standard ball lock keg, you can actually double stack your kegs like this so if you've got a really tight fridge, you can have the ball lock disconnect connected to the keg and then have this one connected as well. So that's a really handy feature. It wasn't really necessarily the main selling feature, but look, certainly if you've got a really tight keg fridge, you know, you will find that kind of handy. If you are doing that though, I'd probably also recommend to uh, move the beer line to one side like that. So you can have them both coming out one side of the keg and then double stack actually like that. So that's kind of a nice, Nice extra little feature, I guess. The other thing you'll notice when you push the beer line in is we've, we've, we've noticed that some people, when they push the beer line in, they don't quite push it in far enough. So having released the duotite uh, uh, fittings some time ago, we've noticed that every now and then we hear about somebody with a leak with the duotite fittings and often it's because they've only just pushed the 
spear line in far enough that it hits the O-rings and looks like it's sealing, but as soon as they twist the line sideways, they notice that maybe they're, they're getting a bit of a leak. And that was often caused by people not pushing the beer line in far enough. So one of the features we put on the side here is actually a little depth gauge. And we're going to roll this out amongst a lot of the duo type fittings as well. So when you look at the outside of the fitting, you can line it up. You could even potentially get a texter and mark out on the beer line where you need to push it in. Um, and then when you push the beer line in, you know that it has to go all the way up to that level to know it's right against the seat at the back of the fitting. So that way you can get some visual indication of how far the fitting needs to go in to make that leak tight seal. Another nice feature of these ball lock disconnects is cleaning. On the plastic ball lock disconnects, you'll notice the top has a little screwdriver hole, so you need to get a fairly large flathead screwdriver, and often you don't have one you know, at hand. The new duotite ball lock disconnects, on the other hand, you can just unscrew the cap and tip out the contents like that. And you see you can wash out that. So if you've got a really hoppy beer, I know guys doing neepers and stuff like that, often dry hopping inside the keg, for instance, you might find hops go in there and they clog up the disconnect and you get no beer flow. Well, often it's the case, it's got hops stuck in the poppet itself, either here or the poppet on the keg side. So just being able to unscrew it by hand, chuck it all out. You'll notice that when I did that though, there was also no seal in the cap. So these plastic ball lock disconnects that we had previously, you'd undo the cap and an O-ring would often fall out on the floor and that would be also pretty frustrating. But the new ones use a wedge seal in the cap and they tighten up with very little torque. You just have to go finger tight like that and the job's done. The other thing I wanted to mention is we've changed the poppet design on these as well. So these new poppets have an over-molded seal. If you look at the poppets inside the older style, um, you know, plastic ball lock disconnects, you'll notice that they have an O-ring on the poppet. Uh, so if you ever sort of uh, use the kegs under high pressure, it was possible, possible to sometimes pop the poppet out through the hole in the base. So um, because we're getting more and more people do higher pressure, uh, beverages where they're doing things like nitro, uh, carbonated water, or you're just simply doing forced carbonation in the keg. Those higher pressures, if you disconnect the disconnect, I'm not sure if you all have ever had this, but I certainly have. If you disconnect the disconnect, sometimes if it's a really high pressure, you can go like that and the O-ring on the pop, it actually blows out the hole. It's really frustrating. You think, oh, gently got to go to the gas bottle, turn that off, and then take apart the disconnect, put the O-ring back on, and then put it all together. So these new duo-type ball lock disconnects are able to go up to 150 PSI. That's like way, way higher than uh, any of the other disconnects so far. So even higher than the stainless steel disconnects for that matter. So it's kind of nice to have, you know, uh, an over-molded poppet in there, which uh, means you can go up to these really high pressures with confidence you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. Um, yeah, the other thing is uh, the O-rings that you get in these types of plastic ball lock disconnects and even the stainless ones for that matter, often the O-rings are made out of either silicon or sometimes out of uh, nitrile. And the chemical resistance is not quite as good as the O-rings that we have or the over-molded seal that we have on this unit, which is TPV. So the TPV essentially is like a, it's like little small bits of EPDM. Uh, but then it's held in a matrix of polypropylene to make the EPDM injection moldable, essentially. So, um, yeah, these have better chemical resistance. The O-rings have better chemical resistance. They go up to much higher pressures. They're autoclavable. They're more compact, easy to take apart for cleaning. And the feature set is just really much better all over. Another fitting that just came into stock as well, I should also mention, is some people want to have a line which swivels around as well. So I might just quickly show you this. So if you've got your beer lines on the keg like that, some people find it pretty annoying if they're pulling the keg sideways or it's bending like this, for instance. Some people actually might prefer to use another duo type fitting, and this is pretty handy if you want your lines to swivel around like that. So you can buy that fitting separately as well. Um, lastly, I should say, we're starting to make these duo-type ball lock disconnects in a couple different sizes as well. The ones I'm holding now are the most common type, the 8mm, uh, that take the 8mm Everbarrier uh, tubing. Um, but we also have the ones that are 3 8 push-in. So if you guys want a high-flow ball lock disconnect, a lot of people don't even realise there's, you know, that option to go up to the 3 8 lines and they've never really thought about it. But if you're transferring you know, beer from keg to keg or pressurised fermenter to keg, like using a firm zilla or something like that, 
If you use the larger 3 8 line, you'll fill at twice the speed. So highly recommended. If you're ever making up a jumper lead with two black disconnects, get the thicker uh, you know, uh, beer line, so the ever barrier 3 8 and then use the uh, 3 8 push-in fitting as well. The other thing is we've got these smaller ones also coming in very soon, so you'll notice them populated on the website where we'll have the duo-type ball lock, ball lock disconnects with quarter-inch push-in. That's because we're about to bring out a new, even smaller diameter ever barrier beer line, which will have quarter-inch OD, and uh, that's roughly 6.35 millimetres. So it means that small beer line will be really useful if you're wanting to apply really high amounts of line resistance. So if you want to have a very short beer line, you can have a tiny beer line going between your you know, tap and keg um, and keep the fridge really neat. The other thing you could do is um, you know, use that very tight, small diameter beer line to bend the beer line around really tight corners. Let's say you're making a portable, portable little you know, esky setup and putting kegs in it or whatever. Um, you know, you'll find that really small uh, type of beer line quite useful. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoy using the new duo tight ball lock disconnects. Look, I think they're absolutely fantastic, great value because they're made out of plastic, but still, you know, made to a high degree of quality and we use really high quality resins and parts in these as well. So look, I think they'll hold up just as well as most of the stainless disconnects, but you know, essentially be more feature packed. So what more, 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 more could you want out of a disconnect? If you want to hear about any other cool stuff, definitely subscribe now. Bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel and you'll hear about all the cool new stuff like this that's coming out. The other thing is join our homebrew community group. So if you go on to Facebook, search for Kegland Homebrew Community Group, find us, subscribe that one as well. And you can be in on the discussion with all our customers uh, on how to get the most out of all our gear. All right, thanks for that guys, and see you fellas next time. Bye.